Hi, welcome to today's asynchronous lesson. Sorry I couldn't be with you today. Please can you write in your books the date, which is the 23rd of November. It's question four, critical evaluation. And what you're answering is, do you agree with the statement? And if so, why? Stop the video if you need more time to copy it down. So I'd like you to look up some vocabulary. You're not going to have to do a lot of writing today. Please look up the words unison, reproach, petulant, and pathetic fallacy, which comes into today's piece of text. Just a note to respond to any offers of additional upgrade tuition. This should come through ALO announcements and your tutor will have spoken to you about it. So the objectives today are to critically evaluate a statement about a text, which is also a critical evaluation. So you're going to critique a critique. We, of course, will read the text and then you can judge whether you think the answer is good. So we're going to hopefully understand that the question is important as it's 20 marks. The two questions we've done so far. Um, the language and structure are both eight marks each and obviously the first one one is four marks this is 20 marks really important you don't miss this question out also you need to understand um, the nature of the question and the possible range of questions that you might get you need to know how to answer it and we'll be looking at a model answer and discussing the effectiveness which i'd like you to write about so the range of questions you could get could include, let me read you a full question and then we've got um, other interchangeable things which might be in the question as examples from papers that I've looked at. Question four, focus on this part of the answer from whichever line they tell you to whichever line they tell you. A student said, I like the way the writer develops our sympathy for the character and his child. To what extent do you agree? You might, agree, you might disagree. In your response, you should write about your impressions of whatever they're asking you to write about. Evaluate how the writer develops these impressions, which means um, use quotations and technique and support your opinions with the quotations. But evaluation is also analysis. What's a writer trying to make the reader think, feel, think, ask or worry about? Other options could be the writer makes us feel just as confused as the people in the scene, or the writer brings the characters to life, or the writer makes you feel as if you're there, or the character is right to panic, or the character's reaction is extreme. The basis of the question is, do you agree and why? So using petal structure, the question is 20 marks, so four basic petal paragraphs, or if you go into deep analysis, you can get away with three. Imagine you're in a horse-drawn coach in the rain on a muddy moor with deep ruts in the road, a howling wind and three other passengers that you don't know, none of whom are friendly. What would you hear, see, feel physically and feel emotionally? Think about physical movements, temperature, moisture and the view out of the window as well as inside the coach and the sounds. Remember all your senses. So here's a picture to help you. Close your eyes and imagine. We're going to read Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. Just the part that you need for this question, not the whole extract that they give you. So this is the question. Focus this part of your answer on the second part of the source from line 19 to the end. A student, having read this section of the text, said, the writer brings the very different characters to life for the reader. It's as if you're inside the coach with them. To what extent do you agree? In your response, you could write about your own impressions of the characters, so that would be your point. Evaluate how the writers created these impressions, so that would be technique and analysis. Support your opinions with references to the text, that will be quotations. 20 marks, you should spend about 25 minutes on this question. So here's the question um, reprinted for those who would like a coloured background. Stop the video if you want to read it slowly. A few passengers huddled together for warmth, exclaiming in unison when the coach sank into a heavier rut than usual. 
and one old fellow, who had kept up a constant complaint ever since he joined the coach at Truro, rose from his seat in a fury, and fumbling with the window sash, let the window down with a crash, bringing a shower of rain upon himself and his fellow passengers. He thrust his head out and shouted up to the driver, cursing him in a high, petulant voice for a rogue and a murderer, that they would all be dead before they reached Bodmin if he persisted in driving at breakneck speed. They had no breath left in their bodies as it was, and he for one would never travel by coach again. Whether the driver heard him or not was uncertain. It seemed more likely that the stream of reproaches was carried away in the wind, for the old fellow, after waiting a moment, put up the window again, having thoroughly chilled the interior of the coach, and, settling himself once, once more in, in his corner, wrapped his blanket about his knees and muttered in his beard. His nearest neighbour, a jovial red-faced woman in a blue cloak, sighed heavily in sympathy and, with a wink to anyone who might be looking and a jerk of her head towards the old man, she remarked for at least the twentieth time that it was the dirtiest night she ever remembered. And she'd known some, that it was proper old weather and no mistaking it for summer this time. And borrowing into the depth burrowing into the depths of a large basket she brought out a great hunk of cake and plunged into it with strong white teeth mary yellen sat in the opposite corner where the trickle of rain oozed through the crack in the roof sometimes a cold drip of moisture fell upon her shoulder which she brushed away with impatient fingers she sat with her chin cupped in her hands her eyes fixed on the window splashed with mud and rain hoping with a sort of desperate interest that some ray of light would break the heavy blanket of sky and but a momentary trace of the lost blue heaven that had mantled Helford yesterday shine for an instant as a forerunner of fortune. Here is the question again. Stop the video if you'd like to read it once more. So what would bring the characters to life mean? That's in the question. It would mean their appearance, their behaviour, their demeanour, their words and how they make others feel, amongst other things. After this is a three page model answer. Please stop the video if you'd like to read it again slowly. I agree with the student because the writer has chosen to present characters of contrasting personality in the extract and has brought them to life vividly. This is shown in the extract when the old fellow gets up in a fury and fumbling with the window sash, let the window down with a crash. The powerful verb fumbling shows his frustration and the onomatopoeia crash shows the violence of his action, indicating that he's creating an unpleasant and uncomfortable atmosphere on the coach, particularly after he soaks his companions. Another contrasting personality in the coach is the woman described using powerful adjectives as jovial and red faced. This puts her in complete contrast with the angry man and shows the variety of people that would travel on a coach in a similar way to how people travel on a modern bus. The woman's contrast with the man is reinforced with the more powerful adjectives with a great hunk of cake showing the woman's different approach to her surroundings. The final contrasting personality is of Mary Yellen herself. She is described using a powerful verb as having her eyes fixed on the window, contrasting with both the other characters with either their cheerful or irritable demeanours, as she is seen to be unmoving and focused on the outside and the weather. The writer has done this to appeal to the reader's senses, in particular the sights and sounds of an irritable, cheerful or quiet passenger, and in doing so provides the student proves the student right by ensuring that the reader does indeed feel they're in the coach with a group of them. So why is this a good answer? Refer to the petal method, which really means what, how, how meaning the technique and the examples and why the analysis, what would the reader understand, feel, worry about or ask? and the clarity of the point of view. Could it be improved? Please write any ideas in your book. When you finished thinking and writing about whether and why this was a good answer, please log on to Century and continue with your path. Thanks.
And these are the objectives again. Please stop the video if you'd like to read them one more time. Please submit uh, the small amount of work that you've done today to me by email. Thank you and hopefully see you later in the week.